This program is brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Your story is just beginning. The 2024 Change Experience Tour is where you need to be. Meet Creflo Dollar on Friday, April 26th at the Centennial Memorial Temple in New York, New York to be renewed by the word and reminded that you are made new in Christ. Your story isn't over. RSVP today. Text CHANGE2024 to 51555. Visit CreflodollarMinistries.org or scan the QR code on your screen. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, you love is here to stay. Oh, it's time we live a new life. Let us not shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. The supernatural will be released for those who will realize that they are God's beloved. The supernatural will be released for those who realize that they are God's beloved. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? That just by realizing that you are God's beloved, the supernatural is going to be released. Now, the super, supernatural is not some, 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 some circus act. It's God on your natural situations turning it around. Oh. It's God super on your natural, and stuff that's not supposed to naturally happen, happens. Glory be to God. It could be something so small as, I don't know what to do in the natural. And then the supernatural gets on you, and not only do you know what to do, but you know five different ways of how to do it. Y'all don't hear me. That's what's getting ready to get on you. That's what's getting ready to get on your house. That's what's getting ready. The, the, the more you sense God's love for you, the more you'll notice good things happening in your life. The more you sense God's love for you. Mm. The more you begin to notice good things happening in your life. How many of you want to see some good things happening in your life? I believe that you will enjoy the blessing of God when you realize how much you are loved by God. Look at this. And with most folks, this is too small. We busy, we busy talking about the fifth dimension of the anointing and the third dimension of prayer. It don't take all of that. I'm saying to you, believe the love that God has for you. Okay, Ephesians 3, 
14 and 20 through, through 21 in NLT, if, Ephesians 3, 14 through 21. You, you know I'm just, I'm hammering this in. I'm, that's all you're going to, you ain't going to be thinking about none today about, except how much God loves you. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Yeah, there's this, this something getting ready, something getting ready, something happening to you right now. Some, something, something's permeating in your, in your soul right now. Glory to God. And you, you're having some flashbacks. You're like, I know God loved me because look, what, look at what happened here and look, look at what didn't happen here and look, look at what's supposed to happen here. And look, look what got stopped here. And anything good that's ever happened in your life came from God. Hallelujah. It wasn't by your works. It wasn't by your manipulation of circumstances and situations. All good and perfect gift come from the Father which is above. So you can go back and count the blessing, count the goodness. That was God trying to get you to recognize, you are my beloved. I love you, praise God. Watch this now. 14 through 21, he says, when I think of all this, <laughs> I fall to my knees and I pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, you can't tap God out. Don't, you can't tap God out. God is love and you can't tap him out. I pray that from his glorious unlimited resources, he will empower you. He will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. All right, so the Holy Spirit, you know what he came to do. Then Christ will make his home in your hearts. I don't think you understand. See, see, God is love. Holy Spirit poured love in your heart. Then love came and, and decided to make his home in your heart. You got supernatural love all on the inside of you, right? Then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust him. See, there it is. I got, I got to trust that, see? He says, your roots now will grow down into God's love. And in God's love, rooted in his love, he'll keep you strong. And may you have the power to understand, as, God, as, as all God's people should, how wide and how long and how high and how deep is his love? <laughs> oh, glory to God. May you experience. Now, this is the thing that we lack. We, we want to goo goo gaga with this love. We want to have an emotional kind of time with this love. But he says, may, your, may you experience the love of Christ. See, I'm talking about what's getting ready to happen, what's getting ready to come up next. You want to know what's next on the prophetic schedule? I ain't talking about all the doom and gloom and when the Antichrist coming and when the rapture coming. No, no, here's what's next going to happen, an experience of God's love. You're about to experience this love that's so high and so deep and so wide, and you're getting rooted in this love, and the devil wants to stop your roots from getting in this love because if your roots get into this love, there will be an experience that will come from being in this love. May you experience the love of God, though it is too great to understand fully. I I'm telling you just what I know today, but it, 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 it is too great to be described in this teaching. <sighs> the essence of the purity of the love of God has never been experienced. God is love. The pureness and the essence of his love by itself melts away whatever's wrong. That's why you got to be careful who you don't believe ought to go to heaven because if they believe in Jesus, as soon as they enter into that realm, all that other stuff can't survive in the presence of the pure essence of God who doesn't have love, but God who is it. He is the essence of it. 
we have put it down to just an emotional feeling, but it is not an emotional feeling. He wants you to feel love that you don't quite fully understand, but the love is not a feeling. It is, it is, it is the... Now you got to ask God what I just said. He said, he said, then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. <sighs> Keep going. Now, all glory to God, who is able through his mighty power at work within us. What is he talking about? What is the mighty power? See, we still ain't convinced because we still seeing it as goo goo ga ga. We still seeing it as a, an emotion. I love you. Now, you feel like you love them. But when the real essence of love comes up, it, you ain't never leaving nobody but your feelings get hurt, you define that as love. Love is not how you feel. Love is loving the guy that hates you, loving the guy that just tried to kill you, loving the guy that killed you. What do you think Paul's going to do? Paul killed people and sent them to heaven. And it doesn't matter because when he gets there, knowing what he just found out right here, the shame will melt away in the presence of the very essence of God's love, which we humans will never fully understand. But I know it ain't this stuff we got in church. The love we got in church is a Rick James type of love. Love them and leave them. through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we ask or think. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. Mm. I hope you caught what he said. Just by being conscious of God's love, you get full of God. Verse 20, just by being conscious of God's love for you, you get full of God. Just by having a consciousness that I am his beloved, just by having a conscious of God's love, you get full of God. How hard can that be? that every day there is a working awareness in my conscious thinking that God loves me and I get full of God. I get full of God. God loves me when the rent need to be paid. God loves me when you just got your heart broken. God loves me when you just lost your job. God loves me when you don't have enough money. God loves me. He said, see, every, every, all that other stuff's trying to occupy that place. Just by being conscious of God's love for you, you get full of God. That's powerful. That's so powerful. Romans 5 and 5 in the King James, flip over there just for a moment. Romans 5 and 5. Watch this. Oh, world changes. The shift is here. The rain is here. We, we finna go now. We finna go. And hope maketh not a shame. Why? Because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given to us. Hope does not make a shame. Why? In other words, hope doesn't disappoint. You have a hope for something and you were disappointed. Hope does not disappoint because when you have the love of God, whatever you hope for will come to pass. 
you have the love of God. He is describing to you supernatural ability based on having the power of love. Hope won't disappoint because you have the love of God. I'm healed. How can you say that? Because God loves me. I'm going to be all right. How can you say that? Because God loves me. Hope won't disappoint. Your hope plus the love of God for you equals great victory and success. Your hope plus the love of God for you. The love of God, you believe God loves you. Your hope plus the love of God equals great victory and success. I just gave you a formula. Write it down. At least try it. At least try it. I'm not just saying it. I'm, I'm saying it. I, I put it in, in, in a formula. So at least try it. At least go home and say, my hope plus I believe God loves me equals great victory and success. It's time to know it. It's time to know it. This is not love, love sermon because we're at church and it ought to be about love because you and I both know that church as a whole doesn't appear to be about love. You get more hate and stuff from so-called saved people. <laughs> that's not the norm. It should be, but that's not the norm. Most church folks don't know the norm. The concentration should be love. And it's not because we don't know what it is. Because love is not it. He's a person. He's God. And we don't know God because we don't know love. And the Bible says if you're not loving your neighbors, you don't know God. You don't know God. You know some scripture. You know about, about how, how to argue about the scripture, who right and wrong, and send folks to hell if they teach a doctrine you don't understand. But we don't know no love. How do you know? Because I can look at your powerless, weak life. Let me back up. Sweet lips increase learning. <laughs> I'm about ready to go there like, no, you don't. No, you don't. I am so just freaked out over the number of leaders and pastors who love hating and slandering and condemning the worst day you ever had as if they ain't never had a bad day. Everybody got a bad day somewhere. <laughs> Romans 8, 37 says something. Trouble's not going to go away because you're conscious of God's love. You're going to just be full of power to overcome it. But it ain't going away. But at least you can know that you can have something on the inside of you to overcome whatever hell come your way. Hallelujah, that you got a hammer for hell situation. Look at verse 37, King James. Nay. In all these things, how many of y'all got these things happening in your life? <laughs> these things. In all these things, we are more than conquerors. All right, now, so the first thing he says here, so there will be trouble, but you will conquer the trouble. I, at this point, a lot of people like to get into Self-preservation, you will conquer the trouble. You now, you, you're now looking at what you can do with the trouble. You ain't, look at you. It's still coming, and sometimes the trouble them beat your brains in. Look, you, you got to finish reading the rest of the Scripture. You will conquer it, how? Through him that loved us. Trouble comes. Father, I know you love me. And then you keep walking. Lord, I know you love me. See, everything that Satan does is to destroy that sense of God's love in you, that sense that you're to be loved. Everything, think about all the stuff the devil does. It is to destroy that sense that you are God's beloved. You got some pain? That, that's there because he wants you to eventually say, well, if God loved me, 
You got, you got a, a bill that's due? You, you hurt? You did everything Satan does is to destroy that sense that God loves you. Just get right down to the nitty-gritty. I don't care about Pick it out. Pick out something that he done did for you. Ultimately, it is to get you to question the love of God for you. That's what he wants. That's what he wants. Once you figure this thing out, you will see, you know, even, even when Jesus was baptized in the water by John the Baptist, and the voice from heaven said, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Satan rejected it so much that in the next chapter and verse, he was led into the wilderness by the Holy Ghost. And the Satan says, if you be the son of God, he left the beloved out. I don't mind if you call yourself the son of God, but I ain't calling you beloved. <laughs> but you are his beloved. Every action, everything Satan does. Do you understand what this does to his operation for those of you who will receive this teaching? Do you understand what it does to his operation? That you're looking at him like, I know you did this because you're going to try, you're trying to get me to question God's love for me. I'm not questioning it. He loves me. He loves me with an everlasting, unending, awesome, passionate love. I'm the apple of his eye. When stuff goes wrong, you ought to start preaching love out your mouth. You ought to go to some stall somewhere and say, God loves me with an almighty, awesome, everlasting, anointed, powerful, endless love. He can't stop loving me. He decided to love me before I even got here. Don't you dare come trying to tell me to question what I already know. My God loves me emphatically. He loves me. You preach love and there'll be a power to conquer the trouble. No, we thought Satan, Satan's, Satan's trying to destroy my faith. No, 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 no. It's, it's, I have to, go to Galatians 5 and 6. He's trying to, he's after you believing that you're beloved. That's what he's after. You believing you're beloved. <laughs> now you can say to me, to tell me God don't love me. Oh, yes, he does. No, I don't. Yes, he does. No, I don't. Yes, he does. No, I don't. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. Yes, he does. For in Jesus Christ, neither circumcision availeth anything nor uncircumcision, but faith worketh, watch this, by love. So the attack is not to destroy your faith. The attack is try to destroy the thing that makes your faith work. Your faith ain't working because you don't believe God loves you. See, we spend so much time talking about, I love God. Don't you love God? We love God. No, 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 because I'm telling you, you don't even do that unless you believe God loves you. Faith worketh by believing the love. Faith worketh because you believe God loves you. Ooh, Jesus. Oh, God, I believe what you said in your word. By your stripes, I'm healed. I believe it, Lord, because I know you love me. Oh, God, I believe you'll supply all of my needs according to your riches and glory. I believe it because I know you love me. I believe, Lord, that I'm going to get a job to take care of my family. Oh, God, I thank you for it because I know you love me. I believe, God, that I'm protected and my wife protected and my children are protected, Lord. And I thank you for your divine protection in the name of Jesus because I know you love me. I ain't got to say that 500 times. I just need to know that God loves me. And because he loves me, I have what I say. Jesus canceled the debt owed for our sins. Love is the currency of the kingdom, and that's what we owe now. Discover this and more in Creflo Dollar's three-part series, The Infinite Debt of Love. We will never be done with paying love to each other. This debt of love has to be paid to humankind. People you don't like, people you can't stand, people you don't know, people you mad at. 
and you will not be able to pay this debt because it's going to take the grace of God for you to make the payments. There is something about paying the debt of love that will release an anointing to take care of all of the other debts you have in your life. For a love gift of 20 U.S. dollars or more for CDs or 30 U.S. dollars or more for DVDs, secure your copy today. Call the number on your screen, scan the QR code, or visit creflodollarministries.org and click eStore. Be transformed by love. Are you ready to come home? Grace Life Conference 2024, the reunion is coming. Creflo and Taffy Dollar will be joined by special guests Andrea Creighton. The encounters in your life change your life, but it also keeps your fire going. Gregory Dickow. It was not meant for us to be looking up at him, but looking to him face to face. Bishop Clarence McClendon. He is resurrected without sin and without sickness, and you were together with him. Inky Johnson. You judge the true character and caliber of a person by what he stands in times of challenge and controversy. Michael Smith. In our highest self, we are made in the likeness and image of love. Hezekiah Walker and Brian Courtney Wilson. On July July 11th through 13th in College Park, Georgia. Don't miss this experience that includes our annual mentality and ministers and leaders conferences. Text Race Life to 51555 to get your tickets now. Do you have a burning desire to see lives changed by the gospel of grace? If so, prayerfully consider supporting Creflo Dollar Ministries financially. You may not be called to preach in a pulpit or perform missions work in another country, but you assist those who are called to do these things each time you give financial gifts to this ministry. God bless you, and I'll see you next time right here on Changing Your World. To support our kingdom mission of winning souls for Jesus, you may call us or give online at creflodollarministries.org. Thank you for giving and enabling us to share this gospel of grace all over the world. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. As we wrap up today's broadcast, I'd like to take a moment to pray for you. I don't ever want to take for granted that you have received Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior. There's no better way to embark upon a new stage in your life than to enter into a personal relationship with Christ. So if you want to become born again and begin an exciting, intimate relationship with Jesus, pray this prayer with me now. Heavenly Father, come into my heart save me. I receive you now by faith and I declare in Jesus' name that I am saved. Thank you, Lord, for saving me. Amen. Well, if you prayed that prayer with me, I want to welcome you to the kingdom of God. The preceding program was brought to you in part by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.